My guest this week is the simply wonderful Ruby Wax. And for somebody who's written extensively on her own depression and mental health issues, I was delighted to hear that she's in remarkably good fettle during lockdown. So for two years, I've been really happy. Is, is that bad? No, that's what, That's all I want for you. Why is that bad? No, I'm, I know, because people like bad news. You know, I don't go, like bad news. If you tell me you're happy, that makes me happy. Okay. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm atypical. I only want people I care about to be happy. In fact, I, I want people I don't even care about to be happy. <laughs> it's, but what interest, it, I think it's very pertinent at the moment, what other people do, what other countries do, because there seems to be this glib sense of English exceptionalism at the moment, which means even though Germany are probably doing things better, we won't copy them. And yet your book's all about being, you know, one world, a global view and saying, why not well, cherry pick things from other places? Yeah, but they already have cherry picked. That's what makes me, uh, that's why, you know, there's a little glow in my eye because Leave aside Finland, but in just an example, there's a couple schools called, and I went to more than this, reach to disadvantaged neighborhoods. I mean, the highest crime rate, free schooling, state schooling, and the teachers take these kids that could be potentially social sociopaths, you know, yeah. their brains are frozen with trauma. And they teach them from their five to 11 years old, they teach them empathy. And they teach these kids, you know, they defrost them. They have to go around in little circles and say what they appreciate about everybody. And one kid turned to me and said, I just love that you care about us. They don't know who I am, care about us enough to care. Then they, um, the teachers say, you know, there's no such thing as a stupid question, which I would have flourished. And so these kids think out of the box. Do you know, there's, yeah. they work as a team. Every single chapter I did, it's all about community. And these kids get real pride when a kid that's proficient in something helps a kid that isn't. And then they learn to lower their stress because we can do that with a little knowledge about how the brain works. So they have tools when they know they're in full fight and flight. They recognize it. And then they go to a little corner and there's a red piece of paper, yellow, green. And if they know they're in red and they're, you know, they're about to take a test, they can get up and see I'm in red and they have breathing balls, you know, that expand and contract. And they have little, um, lots of things, but they have a, a jar that has glitter in it and they shake it and then it's all murky and they know that's their mind. And as the glitter settles, their mind settles and hmm. their parents, many of whom are criminals, built all the kids a Zen, a Zen den and there's gardening and these kids didn't even know lettuce came out of the ground. I didn't either, but, and then they teach their parents to, um, to cook, but the kids teach the kids because you know what I mean? That's when they get rid of the, and there, you can see their excitement and you can see them coming alive, even though you can see the effects of home life slightly shaking, but a little boy saying to me, you know, I'm feeling really nervous now. And once it's out, I go, well, you're making me nervous, you know? They talk about their feelings and it's and at the end, they all sang to me a million miles, which I hate, but they sang it and they all. You could see that they were the they were the hope of the future and I wept and I don't cry. I just sat there because I'm on antidepressants. I had to hold my face like this, like squished up because they they made me cry so much. That's where in was England. This? In that the was UK. in England. So this is a truck, presuming this is a try, this is a pilot scheme, presumably. Uh, uh, there's a few schools in England now teaching, they call it different things. There's something called dot B and some schools are offering that, you know, they know that we can't keep going, you know, making these cookie cutter kids and regurgitating information, vomiting it, regurgitating vomit it. They have to change the wheel, you know, and mm. some schools are. So that, you see what I mean? I could go and go, I did go to China and see a seriously fucked system. Seriously. I mean, oh my God, these kids, they sleep about an hour and the mothers are really proud how little they sleep. Yeah. So when I went in the classroom, they're like doing a mantra of mathematics. And I said to the teacher, Do, is there any depression here? And she kind of winced and she said, no, no depression, lots of suicide, but no <laughs> depression. Because they're famously not linked. They're not linked. If only there's and, some way to stop suicide. Well, um, clearly in, in China, they've got the idea. They just get rid of the kids. So when they see there's a stressed kid, they're sent to the country. 
Is that yes. a euphemism? In no, the same way that, you know, we know that, that certain sort of Muslim populations are sent into education camps. It sounds right. a little like that, doesn't it? Going it's a trade off. It's like when you do a trade with what's that when you you move to a family in another country and they come to you. Oh, exchange the exchange, yes. Yeah. They sent him to gulags. <laughs> They showed me a red room, which was a padded cell. So if the no. kid's feeling a little, the word isn't stress, that doesn't exist. They go into that padded cell. It's a red room and they bounce off the walls. This is in China. And then there's music suddenly plays. Music comes on like horrible, horrible carnival music. And they all stop where they are and do and rub their eyes and the sides of their heads because that improves their vision, which because they blinded themselves from studying all night. So however smart they are, they're really stupid. But it's also what's interesting about that is, is that whether they say they are or not, they're acknowledging this, this stress building, but they, they haven't developed an organic way of a child saying, I have need. Instead, it's like, right, it is time to have need now. It is time for you to be stressed now. Yes, yes. What, exactly. if, what if a child was stressed 20 minutes ago? No, I always not. remember um, a therapist saying to me, I sort of said, oh, you know, we were talking about family and I was talking about how fair my parents were and how even if they had one chocolate bar left they would split it in three and the three kids would have a third each and my therapist looked at me rather quizzically and said but what if you needed more and that's always stayed with me because a child in that situation might not need a padded room or might have needed it yesterday or might yeah. not you know and it's or it's or another class might have needed that but it's it's that one size fits all approach to mental health it just can't suit anybody now in england they are not everybody can memorize like so some classes, let's say they're learning about the Vikings or whatever, some kids paint it, some kids act it, yeah. some kids, you know, because there is the history by reading the history of the Vikings isn't completely accurate. You know what I'm saying? So by memorizing, memorizing exactly what Vlad, the um, uh, guy with the horns, ate for lunch. Vlad the horny. Vlad, Vlad the horny. I didn't want to say it because I know this is a children's show. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what we're aiming for. <laughs> But it, what's the difference if you memorize it, if you get the essence of it, you know, and you love it, that's yeah. what they do now. They follow. What's the kid curious? Once you get that curiosity, that kid's lit on fire. And those are the great schools. And we process what, information in different ways. Like some people are visual, some people are, you go by sound. But nobody yeah. Ever, yeah. And we know that everybody that can memorize is such a decent person. You know, the people that get the <laughs> highest grade. Oh, this is when I was in China, I had to do um I had to go to a school that's called um, Wellington College, where they are introducing mindfulness because it's based on the Wellington College in London. Mm. So certain kids get to go in there in contrast. So I, ha I did some of my show um, and I had a translator woman and I said, I was talking about how important it was to fail. The English teachers were laughing, the Chinese parents there's no expression that expresses <laughs> what their faces look like. No, I've had gigs like that. I'd recognize those faces. You know what? It, it's like melted skin. Yeah. So they're looking at me and I say. It's Dolly on a bonfire, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> She's moving her hands to translate. And there's a line where I say, I was really good at failure, you know, because I knew I could fail, try again, fail, try again. And I said, and all those girls I went to high school with that were cheerleaders and they got straight A's. Well, now they're all crack whores. Her hands stopped moving a so quickly. <laughs> well, how do you? translate that into China. But clearly you can't. It was a showstopper. So I, bet it, show I, I bet it was. All I want to see is the footage of you just <laughs> doing in front of a load of bewildered children and some crying parents. They'll be talking no, about they that for years to come. They'll be going, They're looking it up You remember now. when that lady came, they came and we, we she started talking about crack wars and we had to, and then we had to send her away. There's you know probably... what, they'll all be in a padded rubber room now because of what you've done. <laughs> Well, you know, they arrest you there for littering. Uh, so why well, I haven't been tortured. I don't know. Do you know what they... Yeah, yeah anyway. go on. No, go on. So many on. Things. No, another thing they do that's so extraordinary is on Sundays, parents line up in a park, and I mean hundreds of them, they have umbrellas open and descriptions of their children on it, like Tinder on an umbrella saying, uh, Sue Mei Ling, looking for husband. She, went to, she worked at Goldman Sachs and studied at LSE. That that's the parents are advertising their kids for marriage on Sunday. These people have it together, using simply their their Umbrellas. earnings bracket and their qualifications as the as and the, the qualifications of are yeah. Man says I am ten thousand richest. They name how because they they grade them and how much money they have. Looking for a woman who um, you know worked 
at Lehman Brothers uh, also looking for, and then they give their grades because they have to get a high grade. Otherwise they're stuck in a factory for the rest of their lives. Anyway, it's a wonderful group of people. But I went there just to then give contrast to some of the schools in England and what they're doing. Not really yeah. contrast, just to say, here's the devil and here's the angel. 2020 hasn't been the easiest year for anyone. And for those of us who struggle with stress and anxiety, it's been a proper nightmare. But that's where Grass & Co can help. If you've listened to previous episodes of the podcast, you'll know that Grass & Co is a premium CBD range that blends the highest quality CBD with therapeutic botanical ingredients. The organic CBD and botanical formulations have been specially created to relax your mind and soothe your body. To find out more, head over to grassandco.com forward slash hour. Now, some people who've already tried CBD oils think that maybe the challenging taste is going to be something you have to put up with, but not with Grass & Co, because they've got a range of fantastic flavours that blend CBD with the likes of ginger, turmeric and orange, chamomile and mint. My favourite, ginger and turmeric. It feels like it's doing me good, and then it chills me right down. Grass & Co are the CBD wellness experts and are committed to delivering the very best products to their customers. They only use 100% natural CBD and botanicals in their products, which deliver the uplifting results that you can feel instantly. Grass & Co, I'm delighted to say, have been a long-time sponsor of the podcast. You can now get 25% off the entire Grass & Co Calm, Ease and Rest CBD ranges. Plus, you'll also get free shipping. Just head over to www.grassandco.com forward slash hour and use the discount code HOUR, that's H-O-U-R in capitals, at the checkout. Grass & Co. Life enhanced by nature. I'm just passionate about schooling because you, that is without recognising the individual in the environment. The individual is completely lost. You can take a child, however damaged, however difficult their personal circumstances, and absolutely uh, recalibrate the trajectory of their entire life. Just one teacher did that for me. Just one person can ch absolutely change the landscape for a, for a kid. In a good way? In a good in a such a good way. Oh, because okay. they realised, I mean, I suppose people thinking, were looking at me, and, and I'm sure looking at you would go, okay you know, bookish, worked hard. Get out of here. Know. But you know no, what? You are, I, you're wearing the glasses. I got the D's and was put in I'm the, disruptive. I was completely I was in disruptive. The sl slow class, slow class. D's. I don't believe, oh God. But that's because you weren't taught properly because you're super smart. No, I was traumatized by my, you know, the sitcom going on in our, my home life. I always remember the sitcom. I remember you saying your mum... Correct me if I'm wrong, but it stayed with me. She she basically put cling film wrapper over the sofa. Is that right? Did you say that? So you could sit it, on yeah. the actual sofa. So you, you when you l sat on it, it went, and then when you sat up, and my grandmother walked around with bits of cling film sticking to her and on the dog because my mom didn't like the dog humping Omi's arm. So there was a little cling film on Omi's arm so that the semen wouldn't get on her clothes. Okay. Well, that I mean that's a, that's. That, that there's a certain practical, positive sort of, I mean, no disrespect, but you, you don't want to go around with semen on your clothes. But it just, what, what that's, what, I mean, yeah, that's that practical me you, advice. You, it's practical, you know, there's something going on there that's positive. But it also, the cling film on the sofa means that essentially you're being told as a child, don't get comfortable. Mm, and yeah, well, there were so many messages coming in that that was the good news. <laughs> the cling film was the nice stuff. The, you know, the using the wire brush on my teeth was the hard stuff. You're joking. No, they were, they, my dad used to belt, you know, so um, not all the time, but enough that I remember that it was, it, you know, that's why I couldn't read when I was a kid because, uh, and so when I saw those kids that reach too, I get trauma and these kids' lives were being saved. You know, had I gone to school and the teacher showed some care yeah. and compassion, I would have been a genius. <laughs> I think you are a genius. It's just no, you found I'm not. Longer... I, you listen. You know, you're an autodidact. You found your own way. You you, you educated yourself in what you needed to survive and thrive. And for me, the things you know, I discovered very late in life that I have attention deficit issues. Makes perfect sense. The things that I was interested in, I never got anything other than an A grade. 
because it was just like fascinating. I'm going to read everything about this. The things I wasn't interested in, I failed and failed and failed. I was in the D stream. I was with, you know, D. I remember having a maths book slammed, thick SMP maths book slammed on my head so hard it made my teeth slam together because, you know, teachers were allowed to do that then. And just being called a dunce and an idiot and you'll never amount to anything. And just and being beaten, now. beaten over the head. They were allowed to do that? Yeah, he just, I remember. I remember almost seeing, thinking, God, I can almost see stars. I now I know what it's like. It was so, it was such a violent thing to do. Whilst and that rhythmic, repetitious smacking down of the book and being They were told, allowed to do that? I, I presume so. I mean, well, this was way before parents couldn't smack kids. Although I have to say, you know, I didn't get smacked much as a kid. I was very lucky. I mean, my parents were... Well, I said my Listen. school, I, I was the rebel in my school, but that didn't improve my grades. I put sardines under the lighting fixtures. This takes, <laughs> this is creative. Under the lighting fixtures on the ceiling. And for about a week, nobody could tell where the rotting smell was. And we went, we all went home. No, you got time off school for it? Yeah, I did oh, things that were brilliant then. But of course, you didn't get A's for that. No, it's a shame, but it's dastardly. Did your, but did your classmates know you'd done it and love you for it? Did they love you for your naughty? Yeah, yeah. I was popular for I made a volcano that really erupted in science. <laughs> I think I used that power, that syntax. Yes. I think I did that. And it blew up. We had That's, to I was it. always in the... Did you have a fume cupboard? I'm obsessed with a fume cupboard. I don't even know if they had that now, but I, I, we had a fume cupboard where just shit could happen and you could blow up anything. Oh, like and the I, red padded cell. Exactly. And I used to pretty much climb in there and just detonate anything and then be just gr physically dragged out. We'd have a Bunsen burner on the desk and before the teacher had even begun, I'd be lighting stuff, seeing what happened if you threw some powder onto it. Because I was, I didn't understand. It's only now as an adult where I've developed, like you have, a different way of learning and negotiating and navigating the world. But I finally think, oh, I could do some physics now. I might try and do a physics I listen level. to, I go, well... That's my fantasy now. Every night I'm on the computer and I'm watching shows about quantum physics all night long. I don't understand a word, but I'm fascinated. <laughs> no, no, no. Not a word, but I'm there. I, I'm with them. You know, String but, theory. What is that? Oh, I know. I, it, call me at two in the morning. I know. Then when I wake up, it's all gone. <laughs> Because what it's, what's great is you, when you're a kid, you think science has answers. And then when you get into the world of quantum, it's so philosophical. I listened to that, um, oh God, Theory of Time. What is it? The Carlo? Yeah, I have his book. Revit, look, yes. Look, okay, I listened to the audio book. I, I, I was hypnotized. I didn't understand a word of it. Not one word of it, but it was right like, here. Do you see how obsessed? Yes. That's his book. Okay, Carlo Rovelli for anyone that, 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 that wants. All these books on, psych, on physics. I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> okay, I held up his book, so now I'm going to hold up. This oh, is my book. Okay. I know I'm this gonna, is an audio. And now show. for the good news. Yeah. To the future with love, which I love that as a as a subtitle. Right, the Claudia, the, the Carlo Rovelli thing. Right, I listened to the audio book, and he starts talking about how time moves at a different speed in the What's, mountains what, to the, the valleys. The audio book on what? What's time. It called? Let me just. I'm going to find it now. Hang on. In real time. Hang on. But, I need to do yeah, this. I need to do this because I need. I need to stay up tonight. He's an Italian theoretical physicist and writer. Let's have a look at his book. I know this because I'm holding his book. It's yeah, the most no. inspiring singer the of our age. The Order of Time. Lordin del Tempo. The Order of Time. Okay. It's okay. read by Benedict Cumberbatch. So imagine those silly vowels. Oh, no, vowels. you've ruined it for me. No. Do you know what? He's on point. And you listen. He's going to tell you that time moves differently in the mountains to the way that it moves in the valley. And your mind is going to be blown. And then the next day, you just start crying for no reason. And then it's gone. And I couldn't tell you how it, why it moves like that or why it moves like that. It's called what? Give me the name again. The Order of Time. Order of Lordin Time. del Tempo. Okay. I wouldn't recommend listening to it in the original Italian. Or no, it would make be, as much I'll... sense. <laughs> if I had listened to it in Italian, it would, it would mean no more or less. No, I know. What's the difference? <laughs> What's the difference? I'm... Carl Sagan and I are having a relationship. Oh, I love Carl Sagan. Oh my God. <laughs> How sexy is that man? Carl Sagan is, he's, he's omnigent, isn't he? If, he's he, there was, for if he wasn't dead, I would be dating him. You it's would. always little things that stop the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but in many ways, in many ways, he's still, you, 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 you can still have some An kind affair. of relationship. Yes. Yeah. You can have an atemporal affair with Carl Sagan. No. 
through the mists of time. He and is- Brian Cox. I'm not as not as much, but I met Brian Cox once. This is pathetic. And I was so intimidated. They keep asking me to go on that show. I said, this is how I spoke to Brian Cox. <laughs> and then I got this sentence out. We were having, I was next to him at dinner. And I wanted him to like me. So I said, Brian, let me get this right. If there are infinite parallel universes <laughs> and I'm meeting with one fork, I don't want to get it into my mouth or something, infinite forks. And again, you know, that look of, um, well, it's like something has disintegrated and yes. defecated on exactly. your arm. Exactly. It's like you're sitting in a puddle of your own feces. Yeah. That's how looking Brian Cox at... looked at me. Oh, it gets <laughs> worse. Looking up at a god. It gets worse. There was another guy called Carlos who he said to me was a cosmologist. And I said... Of course he was. I, Carlos the cosmologist. I leant forward and I said, what's the best facelift you've ever um, done? Oh, okay. okay. Cosmologist <laughs> knows what happened like a, a quarter of a zillion second after the Big Bang. Now imagine my state. Okay. Well, anyway, my anus I know what is shut off. <laughs> Nothing. I, I, but after the Big Bang, matter. No, I know now, outwards. Sue. I know now, but I didn't know then. And they didn't think it was funny, I, me asking about a facelift. I, I wasn't being funny. Let's forget it, because I'm going to have a, a, a hot a thing, a relapse. But you know what, do you know what, all questions, for the cosmologist, all questions surely are valid because in another universe, you are asking For a facelift. Well, or or anything. You're asking past the cheese, but you could also be talking eloquently about quantum mechanics. Yeah, but you weren't there to explain that. I I can accept the fact, because I know you to be a trustworthy person, that it tanked proper. I wasn't being funny. I really thought a cosmologist was the guy who does cosmetic (laughs) surgery. Wasn't being funny. Listen, anyone with an ologist, it's, it's, it, do you know what? The, the ologist is, is greatly demeaned once we knew that there was a rumpologist. Once we knew that there was an actual word for somebody who studied the future through looking at someone's ass, the whole la- intellectual landscape was for me denuded. Jackie, uh, Jackie Stallone was a rumpologist. Bless her soul. There's nothing to say. In no. another universe, I'm not listening to you. <laughs> Almost in this universe, by the way. <laughs> So why are you in Scotland, okay? You could be anywhere. I could be anywhere. Well, and when I wrote the book, and now for the good news, uh, there was a section on community. There was a chapter on community. So like business, I went to work at Patagonia in business, not the country, the sportswear company, because they are redefining what business should be doing and don't think they're not making a big profit. But I'm not talking about I'm in community. uh, What they're doing in cities is now extraordinary. In Copenhagen, again, We don't have to build it in London, but just understand they're making the buildings. There's parks between the buildings where people are encouraged to mingle because humans are born to do that. You Mm -hmm. don't have to, but there's the chance. So they say they want to make the journey as interesting as the destination. You know, loneliness is what causes mental distress. But let's put that aside. So I went to see communities in uh, there's. they're called intentional communities and okay. that's where they have a meeting place, you know, and, uh, and, and the ethos is equality, transparency, and authenticity. So they vote for, you know, what goes on in the community. They have, and uh, let me just say that there's one in South London called bed Z. It's got free housing. They do have a community center. It's in the middle of South London. Okay. Um, and so women with babies can give it to other women, older people, you know, have, um, cooking and computer classes. They have a vegetable garden. So, you know, they're all out there in the fresh air. There's zero heating bills because, yeah, you don't have to have money. They know how to capture the heat. They know about the attention. They know about recycling and it's not bullshit. You know, the proof is this existed for 25 years. So there are little communities dotted around, well, there's the world and I've been to some of them, which are called intentional communities where a a town that's already established or they build somewhere where people really wanna live, they wanna walk the talk. So I'm in one in Scotland now, because I think I might write a book, not this the title, but Finding Meaning in a World Without Any, (laughs) where Mm -hmm. I'm in an eco village, there's 10,000, sorry, there's 600 people here, so I'm not alone. I work in the gardens, 
Me, I've never touched dirt. And I didn't like those kids. I didn't know that zucchini comes out of the ground. Who knew? So um, I work there and the food goes to the food bank. And then I, you know, all this thing, sustainable, biomass heating, whatever, people yapping at dinner parties in London, they don't know what the, and I thought, you know, shut up or get off the pot which means do something. So now I'm here and they do um, take their waste, right? And they turn it into like, you can use your shit and turn it into clean yeah. water that grows flowers. So they do it here. They're not just A reed bed about system. It. A reed bed system will turn shit into drinkable water. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by June's Journey. June's Journey is a captivating hidden object mobile game free to download from iTunes or Google Play. The game is set in the roaring 20s and it looks fantastic. We follow amateur detective June Parker through beautifully crafted scenes as we try and solve the mystery of her sister's murder. It's a perfect escape when you have the spare five minutes and you need a break from the stresses of everyday life. I've been playing it loads over the last few weeks and it's a great way to relax, but also to test my observational skills, because each scene is a new challenge, finding hidden objects and discovering more about the murder of Claire and Harry. The hundreds of colourful scenes keep the game fresh and vibrant, while the lightly challenging puzzles keep my brain active and engaged. I found it, to be honest, the perfect balance of relaxing and challenging. If you enjoy puzzles, murder mysteries and great stories, this game is perfect for you. You can download June's Journey now for your phone or tablets from either iTunes or Google Play, or simply by clicking the link in the description of this episode. So where is it? Where in Scotland is it? I'm fascinated. It's called Findhorn. It started off 58 years ago as a very, it's like the Vatican of the New Age. So nuts. So nuts. A woman had a vision while she was sitting on the loo that she must she come did. to Findhorn. Yeah. See, I keep a theme going. Vision that she must come here and start planting. This was a very straight English woman. Planting. It was a sand a dune. And she lived in a trailer. Well, what happened, I don't know, back then, 58 years ago, is huge cabbages started growing on the sand. So scientists started coming. Okay. And, tech, you know, kids from tech schools and whatever. And they've been, there are things here that, uh, obviously, the hippies are, you know, long gone. But now it has the highest condensation uh, not kind of condensation, the highest concentration of startups, of um, young oh, yeah. people doing all those environmental things. It's here, like saving forests and whatever, but they really are walking the talk. So um, again, I think if you're going to yap about the environment, learn how to do it or learn what it means. You know, there's companies now doing greenwashing to make money, you know, where they put wind machines, you know, in the men's loo to replace the hand dryer. And, you know, telling people not to flush the toilet and they'll get a bonus. It's crap. But uh, at least I'm seeing the real thing. And um, and that get, and that's making me happy. I wrote about it in the book for? a month, a month. And then I'm going to do other things that I touched on in the book. For example, I at the end of the book, I did. I chose some charities where I think they walk the talk. You know, it's not through a big organization, but I went with Choose Love and um, Indigo. And I went with these young girls to Samos to work with the refugees and they're hands-on. That's what I love. And they have the glow that I used to have in my eyes. So when a sewer needs built, they get it done. They get it done. They don't have to wait till somebody does a dinner party serving, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, a deer that costs 200 pounds. They get it done. And so now I'm facing these women, you know, and I'm thinking, what can I bring to the table? Like nothing, but at least I'm there, you know, and you see it. And when you're when you feel that compassion, it's really good for your health. So I stayed there. And, and what you're what I'm saying in the after this, I'm going to go to Lesbos. I'm not saying bully for me, but I like when I get that heart thing. I didn't know that it felt so good. <laughs> and well, you'll like this when I was with those women and I was with this really beautiful girl. This is just one who was called Princess and she had purple dreadlocks and really was stunning. And I said to her, oh, what are you doing here? completely composed she says except her leg was shaking that was the only giveaway she said my husband um is a musician and he took film of a riot here where the police were beating up you know people in the public and he put that online so the music accompanied that and then the police came and said could we have that footage and her husband said i don't have it and they shot her daughter right in front of her so she's there 
and there was another woman. God almighty. Where was yeah. this? This is in Samos when there was 5,000 people, 7,000 people there. That, they had room for 500. And then another woman, I'm still in touch with them, whose son was taken away and tortured and then brought back to her. Every story is beyond belief. So they're all in the women's center that Holly built. You know, they know how to get the money and they build it. Yeah. And um, so that's like being in this eco community. I'm trying to do everything I did in the book that really moved me. I would work in a business now that have that purpose in front of profit because I feel good around these people. But you're right. If people, businesses that run that way, that rewards hard work, creates, um, you know, and, and fairness. stress for, and fairness, that there's equality, there's respect, you know, there's flexible working, there's real empathy that people's lives change and bend out of whack. And, that, and you know, they make more money. They come. do. They yeah. do. Because you know what? People talk about, you know, that Chinese model, work, 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 work. And I don't wish to just say it's Chinese. It's absolutely any, anywhere that there is there is a capitalist superstructure. We work, 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 work. How many sick days? How many people don't even count the amount of days we, we're losing to, 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 to terrible mental health, to depression, to anxiety? It's 100 billion is lost a year. There you go. You had, yeah. knew you'd have the numbers. Yeah, I got the So, numbers. yeah. So why isn't why isn't more being done? You make more money when you treat people nicely. When you're happier. Yeah. And and again, this isn't like this eco thing. You can't anymore say this is a new age small thing. I mean, in Unilever, uh -huh. which and in England, Ben and Jerry's company are doing more for refugees than anybody else. It's business that's going to help the world because governments have run out of the piggy bank. Yeah. And um and Dove Soap, you know, there was a because I went there and the, there was a young girl and she has body dysmorphia and was abused and she runs the Dove thing and goes to schools and helps girls with you know poor body image then there's tetley tea i have to look it up they have um in india they have a little slogan that says come to the cafe and sip tea or drink tea and chat okay they invite this is in india and now it's going to be in the emirates um homosexuals and transgender to come in and have a cup of tea and talk about it do, do you understand how earth Oh I mean, yeah, it's, I, it's uh, particularly. I mean, I spent some time in India with, with uh, and spent a lot of time with the transgender community, and to, for them to be yeah. able to sit down and express their pain with anyone, you know, because they're just so abused and maltreated, it's massive. Yeah, you're right. Business. I, I increasingly agree. I never would have agreed with you five years ago, but increasingly, I think me neither. My money. dad was a killer. He was a businessman, and he was. A, he said, "Screw them before they screw you." You know, and he taught me business that was so appalling. I mean, he. I said this before, he was like the guy in The Godfather, you know, who puts the horse's head in the guy's bed who owes him money. That was my dad. He was a killer. So when people are in business, I kind of twitch a little bit. But now I've seen um, there's a book called um, Conscious Capitalism. And there's another one called Firms of Endearment. I love it. <laughs> That's great. Isn't it? But you're absolutely right. That model of, and there's still a lot of corrupt and bad businesses out there, but the, the, the model of the killer businessman is changing. And when you look at, um, you know, you, you look at some businesses that understand incentivizing good, you know, human beings are, you know, terrible, venal, awful creatures, predatory creatures, but you can incentivize them to do amazing things. I hope in my time I've been incentivized to do, you know, some good anyway. But, you know, if you if you tell a community that they're going to be better off for encouraging the turtles to come and lay eggs on the beach um, by setting up eco-tourist spots where people can watch them rather than just murdering them for oil for cosmetics, it's all good. And you can do that. I've seen it. I've seen places where, you know, communities have been been changed, but it's not been done through just persuasion. You need to give them the funds. You need to give them the funds. But also, um, you know, people, we work like neural Wi-Fi. So when you go into some of these companies, they do say we're putting um, we're putting purpose in front of profit. Don't yeah. don't think I'm stupid. They still make a profit. But yeah. Um, People, when they're in community, and this is the whole theme of what I just wrote and why I'm in one, is that people become the best they are. You know, the humans are at their finest when their hearts are open. Because yeah. even if they're just doing that widget thing, at, at some of these companies, um, they get a B certificate now. I went to the, it's a 
headquarters is in New York, where companies apply for a B certificate, which means they have to have fairness, equality, transparency, fairness all the way down the supply chain. They have to, you know, even if they have somebody in China, whatever, they have to have medical insurance, you know, everything's taken care of and they keep their eye on it. And the companies that apply and pass get a B, B core certificate. And that includes Dan and Ben and Jerry's Patagonia, where I worked. There's um, Guardian Media, Freud's, I think, have one. Um, and in the future, people are going to only go or it's going to be the coolest thing to have one of those one of those stamps, because I think millennials are saying giving is the new taking. And there are apps being because there's another chapter on um tech what's coming in tech that is good for humanity not sucking us dry you know you have to look for it otherwise roll your eyes and say well it's all shit well then live in it i mean i'm i'm not in control of your life but <laughs> not yet Come but on. there is the not yet they're making tech now that's going to be an app that you can t well you know it's already on the market you can but it'll be more sophisticated take and see uh put it over the clothes you want to buy and it'll be able to tell you if the person sewing on, sewing on your zipper in Vietnam got arthritis from that, or how old the kid was who made those running shoes, that's just around the corner, and it's not going to be cool to be screwing people in a minute. No, but what's great is it's for also it's of course it's going to mean that big business has to change, but it's also going to make us take responsibility more as consumers, as individuals, going mm, okay. I can see it's a five pound difference, but I can also see this garment was made with suffering and this one wasn't, mm. and. and and but it has to be mass. It has to be mass. Otherwise, you know, you and I are on. Uh, I'm not saying who's the enemy. I, I really we have to change. No, the problem, you know? You're absolutely right. The problem is we have enough money to make these decisions. We have, at the moment it's only making ethical decisions. Really, it's the reserve of people who can afford to yeah. have choice. And, and it should be. But the thing everybody. is, we have too much choice. That's that's the, kind of the problem now is that we knew what we knew how to deal with. Uh, um. We, knew, we know how to deal with um, scarcity, but we don't know how to deal with abundance. That's why now more people are dying of obesity than they are of starvation. We aren't equipped for so much choice. And again, the reason we're so frazzled is the word I use is because we're flood. There's too much choice. So we can't think straight. Do I really need that 10,000th pair of shoes that I brought at two in the morning? If my brain is frazzled, which uh, there's reasons for it, you know, and I wrote about what we're living in a culture that's never happened before. You know, we've always had stress. The Spanish Inquisition was stressful. We've always had anxiety. These things come with the human package and they were perfect for our survival. But now, frazzled is a neurobiological word. It means stressed about stress. It mm. means, oh my God, badly. I shouldn't be stressed. Yeah, everybody else thinks I'm an idiot. I'm, you know, uh, everybody thinks I'm a failure. That's never happened, this running monologue. And that's because, well, I know, I can. I wrote about why, but the point is that's what we're living with, and now we have to learn how to cool our own engines. And so things like mindfulness and things like re-educating kids and teaching people how to lower the cortisol, you know, the stress hormone mm -hmm. in their own mind, it is out there. If you want to learn about it, do it. If you don't, sit in your own, you know, stew in your own juices. Don't buy my book. But it's also you're right about if you open your the most profound thing that happened through lockdown and I didn't have a great lockdown because you know I'm anxious and I, I need to immerse myself in things and all sorts of blah blah but going and being why do you have um you is that that ADHD is that when you have nothing to do you get yeah nervous? I, yeah so I, I sort of tried to master lots of things so I sort of thought oh well, my mum was is, is really good at crochet I'm gonna learn how to crochet so I did that and then I, I I it's almost like the matrix you know when when he goes I know kung fu it's like I know that now so then I'm gonna do something else but I can't stick at it so nothing gets mastered and instead there's just and then you hate yourself for it and I hate to do because I'm not but a see that's the layer the frazzled if you just didn't finish anything and you were at peace with it You'll have a great life. Yeah, so but I'm like never at peace. So then you so then you go outside. You finally go outside, and you start populating your world with people who don't have the luxury of your life. And it's amazing how that changes. You know, just making seventy cheese sandwiches for people on the streets was the highlight of my week. Yeah, I get it. That's community. But and, I, fuck! I wish we didn't have to. I wish there was no such thing as homelessness. And God only knows with the amount. Okay, of but there is, Blanche. Can, yeah. There is. You know. Don't don't make me go back there. <laughs> yeah, Blanche, tear down those curtains and make yourself a dress. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's why I'm in a eco thing, and that's why I like the and I do frazzled. You know, my frazzled cafes yeah. are three times a week, 
and all day because I have there's hosts that run them is because I see 80 people and they're all ages and all colors and everybody I mean there's got a structure it's not a free-for-all when somebody says what what's going on and they talk from the heart you can smell that compassion people's you know young people with all different colors their heads are nodding going yeah that's me too now I'm you know, people say, well, that's just on Zoom. But the thing is, one lady said, I'm practicing on Zoom so that when I get out of here, I've learned to listen to people. And other people go, oh, you know, I've never been able to talk in public because I don't think I exist. But now I know people care. It's training wheels. It's training wheels for what we used to do automatically back in the old days when we sat around the fire. We have completely lost the key thing that makes humans healthy which is community now yeah and if you look at the way that we now speak about what community it's suddenly it's about all the emphasis is placed on a partner and then you the language develops about my other half my better half all we've reduced we've reduced our horizons to the point where we don't even think we're a whole person unless we're with another so it's just the one other person and you you have to tether to them and that's everything and it's so unhealthy well As I say, you know, people say, well, what should we do? I don't know. You know, you're making sandwiches and I have frazzled. If everybody does a little step, you know, but as as you say, I can already see changes in, you know, because I live out uh, where I have a little writing place and the town isn't using their town hall anymore to um, for the next fate where they're going to paint the (laughs) paint the chickens yellow. That'll be the now they're getting together and they're talking about when they're picking up the garbage. You know, things mm. are switching a little bit. I think I think it is true. I hope it stays. I hope this isn't just a sentimental journey uh, down. Uh, let's bang our pots on Thursday night. That's the real deal. If that didn't make you happy, you're not you're not allowed to be human. Every week I cried and I sort of thought I cried too. I, I sort of thought, well, maybe there'll come a week where I don't cry. But I, I cried for lots of reasons. It was multi layered. It was we're we're honouring this venerable institution that that we must try and keep and we must stop the creeping privatisation. We're venerating the people that put themselves in harm's way for us. But also, oh God, there's my neighbour and she's waving at me and I never see her, I never see her. Mm. Up the the hill, they say, hey, how you doing? And all these people, all these people who, you know, outside of that, you know, still have their petty disagreements about planning laws and who's mowing what. And for one one moment. moment yeah we were all at just a big mass of humanity united in one thing which is thank you and the act of mm. gratitude i find and i know you've written about this but being grateful whatever your circumstances and i i just found that so extraordinary i had given myself permission to say oh god thank you for the higher minds and higher beings that are just laboring down there I live on a hill. And now, I can almost see it. I can almost see the big hospital. I certainly can oh. see the, my local hospital. And it's just like they're in this plague pit for me and us. Mm. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah. And also noise. I don't know. You know better than me. The sound of it. Yeah. Has that kind of primal agitation. Well, you know, we have to rebalance who gets paid. I think. Um, for sure. Yeah. Because, in, well, in Finland, again, the teachers get more money than most other occupations. I Do mean, they? They're, yeah, they're revered. It's really special if you're a teacher. Good. But um, but it really it really is special if you're a teacher. The, you, you know, all the consultants in New York can die and it won't make a difference. But if one garbage collector goes, you're screwed. So yeah. I'm just saying. But I think, um, I don't know if those things will change, but I think that you know, there is something in the next generation. There hasn't been movement for a long time, but no. they have no choice but to get angry or they can burn out. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't. They can see what it did to my generation. We were just foul. We were all rebellious. Yeah, the world should change. And then we screwed the world blind and used it as, as an ashtray. I mean, I'm ashamed, yeah. uh, but I'm trying to turn it around now at the last second. Doesn't matter. This is like you, you're like a Roman Catholic stream, you know. You can you can go right up to the wire being as bad as you like, but you can just turn it around on a sixpence. But it's true. It's you know, my job is to do it's acquisition, acquisition. And and even as you're acquiring, you don't know why you're doing it. We're just part of a system that's just consumption based. But it's up to the individual rather than it's this party or it's this party pointing, you know, uh it's the environment, it's this and this. It the sickness is in our minds. It's the frazzle thing. If you changed your mindset, we don't have, it's not waving crystals. If you change that, if you learn to lower your stress. Yep. Oh <laughs> my God. I'm just proffering a crystal. Yeah, that's what I got. 
Okay, just for surety. Sorry. Just need to deal with that. Do you think that you. makes you a, a, a like a nicer person? No, but I think it takes. A, this is what I think, right? Is I think that's going to take some radiation away from my computer, so I put it here. Because what's the worst <laughs> that can happen? You just how need to educated are you? <laughs> Okay. I'm too educated, and that's why yeah, I look, to... And I have a seashell because it helps the angels have a landing pad. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm gonna. I'm, I've got that as well. That look at that. That's incredible. Okay, I can. It doesn't matter I, what it's for. It here, can be listen just to this. To focus my. What is that? That's my ting. You've got a Tibetan singing bowl. Oh no! I have a real. I'm staying in somebody's oh, house. Right, I've got one. Where's the singing Sweet ball, God, bitch? that's a gong. <laughs> that's a gong. I got a wait gong for, here. Wait for it. Wait for it. Can you imagine okay. now? I'm going to get out an enormous Tibetan trumpet. Hang on. No, no. I'm not. But no, no. I've been around there, but I haven't got one. Hang on. I'm showing you my bongs oh, here. I'm showing you my bongs, but I'm plugged in. Okay, I'm taking you around my house. Well, it's not my house. I'm renting it. Sue? Right, hang on. Can I show you mine first? Yeah, go on. <laughs> That's just in the... That's not different than this one. <laughs> so, look, here's Sweet this God, one. I've got to try and describe what's going on. Right, Ruby's taking me around. She's just got a selection of vast, what look like sort of ceramic potties that she's banging. Are you sure that she's Tibetan? Oh, you've got Buddha there. Good. You've got okay. Buddha. So don't right. tell me about that. I've got a lot yeah, of... Um, I've got a lot of amulets that were gifted to me from various <laughs> hill tribes, which I actually am not going to be made to feel shamed about because they were given no. and received with... Right. Oh, fuck. Yeah, deal with it. Let's have a ting a thong. Right, okay. Poor Dan, okay. right? Dan produces this podcast. Which he's is now better. got tinnitus and has gone mad. He's going he's <laughs> to need some better? mindfulness. Do your ting. Okay, this is my, and this, can I just say, came from the autonomous prefecture. No, just well, one, on. just one. All right, hang on, let me just do it. Hang on, let me just do it. Listen to the sustain on that. That's good. Come on. Sustain. <laughs> okay. Listen to the ting on this. All right, go on. Oh, that's short and sharp, but it's got... Oh, it has got a lovely half-life. Who's is better? I don't know. Maybe we have to involve Dan. <laughs> Dan, have you left us? You're still there. Dan. <laughs> we'll make him come. He doesn't want to come back. Right. Who's Dan, better? Which, which one's I don't better? mind if it's Ruby. You just have I to say. I don't care either. So your sustain was better, but Ruby's initial ting was stronger? <laughs> A draw. He's Dan, looking, thank you. He's looking for language. There's yeah. no words that he's have been just invented. like, where has this gone? The fact is that we've it's been like able Battle of the Bands. This is Battle <laughs> of the Tings. But with no warning, we've been able to find a selection of Tibetan singing bowls to hand to be able to do it. We're what's wrong with the world. We really are. We've acquired these trophies, these badges of Zen. Yeah, but they didn't they're not like an Hermes bag. They're tings. They're tings. Yeah. yeah. And I, uh, yeah, they are tings. And they're they are special tings as well. Um, <laughs> do you still, I, I will always remember that with great love that, that we were able to do that. So do you still like every day meditate? Do yeah. you? Do, no, yeah, you I have to. I'm sorry. I ha do you? I have to because um, a, uh, it's, um, a, it, I get the, t I get the um, weather condition of what's going on in my brain so that if a depression is coming, I get a forecast and then I can do certain things like shut down social media uh, rather than having dinner parties where I invite people I've never met. I was so crazy when I had a depression because we like to get busy to show people we're fine and we're not fine at all. That's what depressed people. You can always tell. I called Nigella because I suddenly had people over for dinner. Um, to ask her how to make one of her lamb shanks. I had people at my house. I don't know who they are. Please, I learned she's how so to. Lovely. I bet she. I, I bet she told you. I don't remember. I was too crazy. And then I went to a. I went to every event I was invited to. Now I don't go out at all. And I went to an event where Celia Emery coincidentally was there. A woman took me, and it was for a charity called Save the Puffins. Okay. A woman of uh, Scottish. Uh, whatever, gave a lecture about how terrible it was that the puffins couldn't land anymore on rocks in the Orkneys because of the winds. They couldn't lay their eggs. So I said, because I was insane by then, so shoot the fuckers. Okay. That's, yeah, a, that's, was, a, that's a spicy, that's a, that's a spicy interjection. Anger is another sign of Great Depression. 
<laughs> and then I was institutionalized. And when they took me in the institution, I was going, no, it's, I have a tennis lesson. I can't go in here. Wait a minute. I'm taking up macrame. Where's my German teacher? And then they gave me a shot and I was I'm not, out. I'm not, I am not laughing at, um, I'm, I'm not laughing at institutionalization or anyone else's, but it's just, I, it's very familiar to me. I have, I have a, 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 a wonky brain because I have a pituitary tumor and if if I forget to take my medication then I can really veer into the the realms of the deeply insane so I, I I'm not it, it's I hope you understand it. it's the laughter of someone who recognizes I know all the, I all the signs and just I, I, you know I, I when it was really bad I just walked uh in the path of an oncoming traffic Finchley Road at rush hour just going well why would you take this road at every single motorist until it became clear that perhaps I needed to and you were walking traffic. against traffic just furious yeah almost like i was stock taking and saying you know, but uh, people just beeping no, I know. Fl- and all i remember really now is the glare and the flare of the lights and as you say the time and you know whatever you know you think things you lose their heat but it was bad it's bad yeah. and what i was i need to track back to the puffins just for one second because this is how my brain works which is if a charity and i love puffins and all animals and i was res- you know i respect uh, puffins i respect puffins i wasn't supposed to be second, there no, of what? course not. You, but if the reason that they need saving is an atmospheric condition, what can you do about that? You can't change the wind direction. You get wind machines. We all go up there and we blow those suckers the other way. But let me tell you, this is such a coincidence. You know what I'm doing tomorrow at 630? No. Here in where I am. Yeah. Um, They've taken a consensus and it's not now, but 60,000 geese or therefore go past my window out because I'm on an ocean, go past one way and then they come the other. The sky almost turns black. That's how many there are. And then they land at 630 in the morning in the bay. Tomorrow morning at 630, there's a woman here. There's a group that go there at 630 and stop the people from shooting them. They go every morning and I'm going tomorrow. Talk about saving a puffin. It's such a coincidence. I'm in Scotland and I'm going to be there in the bay and they can't shoot when you're there. And there are about 60,000 of these geese. Imagine the noise, but um, I'm making up for the insult to the puffin. I'm saving geese. Yeah, you are. Imagine the guano. You're going to need, can you imagine what your mother would be thinking? The woman that put put cling film on a sofa, you're about to stand underneath the the flying cack of uh, uh, tens of thousands of <laughs> But luckily, geese. I know what to do with cling film. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I know how to work it. I can cover everybody. Isn't the universe weird, though? I mean, I, I yeah, say you We talked complete... about puffins, and I'm doing this tomorrow. Yeah. The weird... And we both have tings. Yeah. And I've written a book called And Now for the Good News. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a... You see, your dad... It's your dad rising. It's the killer businesswoman. She's like, okay, yeah. I've had this freeform chat. It's all gone swell. Yeah, get probably the book pop out. in the yeah. yeah just get yeah. the yeah, get the get, get the, the retail. You know, yeah. Otherwise, what you know? What are you wasting your air time for? <laughs> and now I light a cigar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hang up the suit on the peg, or give it to somebody. Give it to a woman to hang up for you. I want to ask about lockdown because specifically, I mean, so that you have your meditation practice and 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 you are medicated and all those things that you've done to sort of safeguard your well being. Mm. How was it for you? Because you like me are quite a sort of toppy a uh, kind of chatty human that perhaps fixes too much self-worth to job and no I'm not Sue That's not anymore so not anymore maybe well it was either pushed out of me or um uh, you know I, I it's funny I talked to Louis Theroux a couple of days ago and he was my nemesis and it was really brave of me to do it. I've never spoke to him. He, I, in my mind, he took my job. The last time I saw him, I gave not one but two BAFTAs. And we had a conversation for about two and a half hours where I just said, here's what you, it's not you. Here's what you represent to me. Because at a certain time, I um, was fired from my job. It wasn't fired. I was asked to do things that were so disgraceful that eventually I got so fucking depressed. I, I had to be put away. I have depression anyway. You know, TV shows don't make you depressed. It's a disease. But coincidentally, I got really ill. And when I came out, I thought, I'm going to learn about my mind. So in a way, I have to thank him for him and Alan Yentob, you know, because I was too old to be on television. I was 50. So I would have by now, I would have been made into chopped liver. But I'm 50 and I'm a man on television. I I mean, I do feel that. Got 10 more minutes. (laughs) This, sort of this show, yeah. this show is not going to finish. Let me just tell you, if you're 50, you're done. No, you might be okay. 
but um, that's good I wasn't. to know. I feel I feel validated. You'll be okay, but I wasn't going to be okay, and I only had that uh, disease of c- celebrity. Uh, I had the disease. I caught it from people who were famous. But anyway, I had, and so I had to wean off. I got on tubes saying, "Do you know who I am?" And they go, "No, uh, pay the fucking ticket." You know what I mean? Because I thought, oh, did you do that? Did you do the do you know who I in the am? Began, thing? In the beginning, I was insane. And I started going to school to become a psychotherapist. Gradually, I was just a student. You know, I forgot what I did in show business. I had new friends and I carry my books and go to the cafeteria. Um, and then I had another breakdown. And, um, and then I thought, I'm really going to figure out how my mind works as much as I can. You know, not, we don't know anything. It's, we're in the foothills, but I want to know what I would have studied had I had a brain when I was young. So I crashed a course in neuroscience at UCL, and they were all 21. And I said to them that I, this isn't a joke, I said, I have that disease where you age really fast. <laughs> and um, anyway, I stayed there. And then I looked up, and <laughs> I really, then they let me go with them. And, but I had a car, so I got kind of popular. Yeah. And then, um, and then I thought, what are the what's got the most? Uh, wh- where's the most evidence of what works as far as being able to lower the cortisol? Because I knew what damage that did, the stress hormone, and I was fried. You know, whatever got me into show business, which was the drive of a Rottweiler, in my thirties and forties started to backfire, and I'd crash into walls. I had anyway. You know what I mean? I'd use the same power for nothing. And then um, mindfulness and cognitive therapy had the most um, evident, you know, most positive results, not 100%. So I found the guy who invented mindfulness based cognitive therapy, one of the guys, he was a professor at Oxford. And I said, I got to know what happens in your brain. I have to know I don't want to wave crystals, um, which you have. I know, don't hold it up. Uh, so the woman who just smacked a sort of luminescent potty to make a noise out of it i'm not going to take that from you <laughs> it's We're not luminescent. Doing what we need to get by. it's turquoise i'm not luminescent <laughs> i look luminescent on the zoom <clears throat> okay um so anyway so he said if you want to learn about the brain you got to get into oxford like you did you go to oxford uh, i went to cambridge but to be honest who cares yeah well now when you're in your late 50s i cared and um now I was really interested in how the mind works, not when I was young. And it changed, my, and it changed, you know, to write a book on neuroscience and comedy, Louis can't take that from me. <laughs> was Louis terrified by the fact that no. you pinned all this on him? No, no, because I did it. You know, I had some people holding my hand here um, because it had to be done with no anger and no um, agenda. It was just, here's what I've projected on you for all these years. And you might like to hear it or not, you know, but I'm not going to be interviewed and go, hey, let's talk about my book. This is going to be fun. If you're asking me to talk to you, I'll talk to you. And he really it was it was like a closure. You know what I mean? I feel That's great. Yeah, I feel like uh, that A was courage and B. I said it wasn't really you, but, you know, because of my dad being so violent and men taking things from me and stuff, it It's not about show business. It's about what you represent. And it always is. And I think to be able to say it is kind of uh, healing. I think I need closure with Lou through it because we were both in the weakest link. And he just knows much more, many more facts than I do. I mean, millions of times. I don't know any facts. I don't know any facts. My brain doesn't work that way. And I won. And he should have won, really, because he knows more facts. But I've got better questions. And I just, I have this sneaking suspicion ever since then he hates my guts. I'd really like to talk that out. If you him. had to talk to me two days ago, I could have asked him. Nah. But, but there'll be uh, time. I know I'll, I'll, I'll get to see him and I'll go, Louis. Yeah, Seven Ruby did it. No, I know. God, anyway, I feel he better. He must just think these insane women are just sort of. He didn't. He didn't. He got it completely. He no, got he's it cool. Completely. He gets it. He gets yeah. it. He's, he's a, he's a worse, But in he's my a mind, he, it was to do with uh, taking food out of my mouth and my kids because I was kicked out by, in my mind, two men. And um, had I not reinvented, and I was just an actress clinging on and saying, please put me on Love Island, I'll eat my young, and put me on skates, you know, I'll I'll remove my uterus with my teeth, you know, when you get desperate. But luckily, I got into Oxford, and luckily, the Queen gave me an OBE for my mental illness. And I have to thank Louis for that. It all works out the way it's going to work out. What interested me when you were talking about 
fame and celebrity. It's the people that are so lost in it who go to restaurants and stuff and don't expect to pay for things and then just go, do you know who I am? Those are the people, it seems to me, that have no idea who they really are. Oh, no. But, you know, I, when I interviewed celebrities, which I didn't like, because I used to do documentaries yeah, that Louis I took know. from me. But um, the you, celebrities... You said closure. You said you've got closure. No, you can't I know, say but that I'm now. saying it with love. Yeah. Right. Um, but anyway, that's I love the documentaries. And then they said, do some celebrities. I didn't know they'd make me do it for five years. Is that it, it was really a study of the illness of fame. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Then I got it, right? I could have written a thesis. And I said, okay, can I go back to doing documentaries? And they said, no. But I, I really studied fame like it was an illness. And I mean, I made great friends out of it, but it is an illness. What is, is it John Irving that said, uh, or John Updike rather, who said fame is a mask that eats the face. Oh, An idea that it's good. ivy. Yeah, I think, I that's think it fits. very good. Somebody smarter than me will correct me if I've got that wrong. But um, yeah, it is. It's that idea that ivy just surrounds the tree, but it's it's not eating. decorating the tree; it's eating the tree. Oh, that's good. You said that you caught the celebrity disease, but it's strange to me because you actually were one of the few people providing a critical perspective, critical narrative on that. I know, but when you run, when you play tennis with a pro, you become a pro. So because I was. And not when I was in documentaries, but when I started, you know, hanging with Sh Sharon Stone and things, I got excited like I was a little girl and prom queen like me. Yeah. It rubbed off. I started tap dancing for him rather than treating, you know what I mean? I was I think an I'd be like guided. If I was, I was around pretty people, if I was around pretty people, I, I was would, around I pretty just, people. I wouldn't believe because. I've never been around pretty people. They're not my. They're not. They're not me, and they're not my 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 tribe. But you know, no. when a pretty person at school would just like look at you or be friends with you, it's like the. That's sunshine. what it was like. That's terrible, yeah. wasn't it? I know. I tried to make them like me, and then there were some people like Donald Trump who really hated me. Really That's a badge hated. of honor, though. That's a badge of honor. I forgot you interviewed him. I remember, of course, Imelda Marcos. I can remember, or you know, th these things I remember. But my God, you, you, you could have, you could have just ended. I could have busted then. him if I wasn't so over. Um, he made me too nervous, so I asked stupid questions. If, when he said I want to be the next president of the United States, I would have just leaned forward and said, "Tell me what your plans are," without trying to be funny, which I was. Um, he might have hung himself, but instead, I tried to be. You know, I. I I, I, I did, you know, when the court, when the fight and flight goes, you, you, you can't think straight anymore. So was he intimidating? I mean, what was he? Was scary. He... Oh, but like my father squared. He was the scariest yeah. human being I've ever met in my life. The hatred coming off him. Why? Um, because you, 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 you Because I wasn't sort of... sexy. You know, well, he didn't not, understand Well, not to what... him. Not to him. No, no, but I wasn't playing that card. And then at the end, when I got in a car with him and the sound was off, he started telling me what he likes to do with women and how he treats them. And rather than me going, oh, my, oh, Blanche, I'm so, you know, I'm so offended. I started being cruder than he was. And then he liked me because I was one of the guys. And then you go home and you feel shame. I go home and I feel shame, but I got him. You know what I mean? I got him. Well, you and saw then, him. Yeah. Yeah. And I got, I met his, I matched him. And then when the show was aired, my next guest was John McEnroe who said to me, I met Trump and he said, if he ever sees you again, he's going to kill you. <laughs> so I guess, I guess I did get him just like my dad. It's amazing said, though, isn't it? How he's going to kill me. Idle threats from, yeah, Idols. The, the, the idea, the idea that someone can even say that glibly is just, yeah. well, I'm glad I hope for a second somebody got under his skin. That's why I have my tinger. Yeah. If he ever out. comes... If he yeah, ever comes you know near me, I'm ready. I'm going to do that. And maybe, do you know what? This seems like a good place to end. If we just clear the energy. We've mentioned the Trump word. Okay. God, Dan was right. My reverb is so... Oh, God, you've got them all going. Okay, I can't be I there. got the mother of gongs. Thank you. And I hope to see you in the real world and remind you too. you are quite brilliant. No, you and, are. And that you even, are. even in struggle, you managed... to you, you, your struggle enlightens and shines a light rather than implodes into darkness. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I Which is one you. way of saying, you're fucking great. Thanks for your time. And you are. And Ruby's book, and now for the good news to the future with love, is available to buy now. I don't know if you noticed, but she was, she was plugging it throughout. 
As always, the music in this episode was by Waiting for Smith, and you can listen to more of his tracks on YouTube and Spotify. Yes, it's true. When I'm down and I'm blue, all I do is stare at you. I'll be heading east to find my peace where the desert.